Welcome to my channel. This is an indication of some of the things that I cover on a regular basis in my videos. If you haven't already subscribed, please feel free to do so. And don't forget to click the little bell so that you'll get notified of future videos. Please feel free to share my videos on your social media. And I hope you enjoy the video which follows. Well, good morning, everybody. I thought I would start off by showing you my only sunflower. And I didn't plant it. The birds planted it. I have a, well, I had two feeders, I guess, two bird tables, not too far from where this thing is, all last winter, and one of the birds must have dropped a sunflower seed. It's about five feet tall, uh, sort of elevated a bit, There's but maybe four and a half feet tall. I think in the seed that I use, there's the black oil seed, and another one that is... Uh, black seed with a white stripe on it. Uh, they're both the commercially raised variety, I think, for for uh, oil, sunflower oil. So they don't grow terribly tall, and as you can see, the, the birds have already started removing some of the seeds from the very top of it there, even though they're not ripe yet. I'll start off by talking about my squash once again. You can see just a bit of the plant here. That's a zucchini that I planted in there, one of the Costata Romanesca. But I've had something nice happen <laughs> with the squash plants that were eaten right down to the surface of the ground. Some of them have come back. A tiny little thing here, which I don't think stands a chance of getting large enough to produce anything this year. We're already into the first week of August here. This one here is doing better, and I will take you over and show you this one. This whole bed, uh, when I first planted them in the spring, was all baby blue Hubbard. And that last one that I just pointed at, as far as I know, is my only surviving baby blue Hubbard, unless these two other ones that have, you know, have come back up from ground level. But it has a, a squash on it, so I'm going to get at least one baby blue Hubbard. And this one over here, uh, I replaced a baby blue that was eaten uh, with a red curry squash. And it's already got a small squash on it. So I'll show you some squashes in the other beds as well. But uh, I'm so pleased that this has come back and I've at least got one baby blue Hubbard so I can get to dry one finally. Well, as you can see, it has even, it even has the shape of a, of a Hubbard. Uh, well, the huge ones, they, they sort of have a shape of a lemon. Uh, this, these are supposed to only grow a pound or two or whatever. They're not like the gigantic ones. I can't grow the large ones here because my growing season isn't long enough. So far, that's the only female blossom. It's produced a number of male blossoms. And I, if I knew when I ordered the seeds, I don't remember, but I had done some research as to why it isn't producing these long trailing vines like most of my other squash are doing and it's because it's a semi bush variety so evidently it might produce some sort of a vine it's only semi but it's just a bush plant evidently well, that large one which i think is in the in the viewfinder i can't tell in the bright sun that's another of the zucchinis and it has been producing zucchinis very nicely and the other ones here with the sort of mottled leaf that's black futsu japanese uh, squash and until this morning there had never been a female blossom yet they seem to be the slowest the vines have been growing beautifully and I can see tiny female blossom buds on them but they weren't opening up uh, today I have one I'll show it in a second here we had a rain in the night last night evidently a pretty good shower uh, there's quite a bit of water in a wheelbarrow that was dry yesterday, so that's, that is good because it has been well over a month since we had any rain. But as you can probably see, these are wilting already. They do it every day in the sun. The leaves sort of wilt back even though they've been watered and with all that straw around, I would think a lot of the moisture is retained as well. But they wilt in the sun and as soon as they get back into the shade in the afternoon, they perk right back up again. This is the first black futsu uh, female flower to open up, and I hand pollinated it this morning. I hand pollinate every female blossom that I find on any of my squash plants. Uh, 
there wasn't another uh, male black futsu blossom, so I used, I think, maybe a spaghetti squash blossom. All that means is you wouldn't uh, want to save the seed because they would never come true, but it doesn't affect the, the squash any, and I don't like to lose one. So There we go. We've had a <laughs> angel wants to get in the show here. I didn't grow them from seed, but I bought uh, some spaghetti squash seedlings at a garden center um, to replace everything that was being destroyed here by whatever it was that was doing it. And since I set up the trail camera, whatever it is has never come back. I should have set the camera up earlier in the summer. Maybe it's camera shy, I guess, but it seems to have moved on. I still think it must have been a deer. Uh, entire plant disappearing at night, but I have quite a few of the uh, spaghetti squash in various areas in the garden, and I do like them, and uh, I call them a winter squash. They store very well. That's sort of white right now, but it will be sort of a beige, creamy beige color when it's completely ripened, and once it uh, cures and dries off some, they will store for months, so. and, I, and I, I, I like the squash. I uh, only had it once, as you might prepare it for children with spaghetti squash, <laughs> spaghetti sauce on it. I didn't really care for that, but it's a very good squash. Uh, kind of strange when you dig it out, and it sort of does look like spaghetti. But my favorite seasoning for any of these is salt, pepper, and butter, and they are delicious. I got my rutabagas, or turnips, as we prefer to call them here, transplanted well, probably about a week ago. And the plants have more than doubled, probably tripled in size since I put them in the in the bed here. Hopefully I got them in early enough that they'll develop into some sort of a size. I like to leave them until we have frost. That's supposed to make them sweeter, and that's always what I've done. So, um, and that's why I plant them so late. The things that I grew up in the community garden last year were 20-pound <laughs> turnips. They tasted okay, but what do you do with a 20 pound turnip? They just keep growing and growing and growing. So hopefully I'll have some one or two pounders or something by the time we have some frost in, in late September here, or even early October if we're lucky. So this squash growing area was made up of three smaller beds, uh, was all red curry squash originally. And I of course lost some of them and put other uh, varieties in, but that's one of the red curry. They start out as a pale, pale lemon yellow, and that's gone sort of orange, and they will be a red orange when they're finally ripe, and that's a nice size one. I'm pleased with that. How much more you can see here, but off to the left is another zucchini plant. And the other ones, I guess some of those are, are red curry as well. I'm kind of hoping that I have another of the baby blue hubbard in here because I was just transplanting anything when something got destroyed either by slugs or the mystery creature and I might have put a baby blue hubbard seedling out here. I'd like to have more than one squash off of it or at least if I get one I'll get to know what they taste like. And at last things are starting to happen in the brassica cage screened in thing here. I've had some of the broccoli it's very good but the heads are not large. I don't know if that's just the variety that I've chosen, or once again, it's because they're growing in this in this cage. But at any rate, I'm getting broccoli, and it was tasty. And the back row in here is cabbage, and they are just starting to hit up, which is good, in my opinion. It wasn't a heavy rain last night, but if they were already full-size heads of cabbage and you get a good rain soaking, they split wide open. <laughs> I often said they explode, and I get lots of strange comments once I tell people about ex exploding cabbages. Hopefully you can see the beginning of a little white curd down in there. That's my cauliflower, and they're also starting to produce. Small yet, but hopefully they'll get much larger. My second sowing of butter crunch lettuce has really taken off in the short time that it's been in the bed there. I'm not sure. Two and a half, maybe three weeks. I can't remember exactly how long ago that I 
planted it, but it hasn't been that long. You can see one blank spot there already. In the lower left, I think you can see it. They've already been harvesting it. It's delicious. This is that bed that was the asparagus bed. and it's got asparagus coming up into it anyway. And I put a lot of the chicken manure and then a, a, a bale of that organic compost on it. Planted it with squash. And, well, they're doing well. They're producing squash. As you can see down here, that's a, that's a spaghetti squash. And further down, if I can get that in or not. Well, <laughs> I never know what I'm showing here. Yeah, that's a red, a red curry squash. But something is continuing to happen to the leaves. Um, the newer leaves are a nice color. Nicer than the older ones were. But as you can see, that leaf there has been devastated by something or other. It doesn't seem to be bothering any of the newer leaves. So hopefully it'll carry on and I'll get some ripened squash out of it. I'm standing in the doorway of my very hot, steamy greenhouse this morning, so hopefully the lens isn't all steamed up. That is my cucumber patch. Uh, eight cucumber plants, the European gherkin. And they have been producing like crazy and still are. I've harvested roughly 15 pounds so far. I've made two batches of my favorite pickles, bread and butter pickles. And they've turned out very nice, they're lovely and crisp. And I don't know, this is, I've got enough in the refrigerator now to almost make another batch, but I think I'm waiting until I do the next harvest, it'll be in the next two or three days. I see some pretty good sized ones down in there, and I think I'll make some sort of a relish next, but a very successful crop of cucumbers, and I love the variety because they're all female blossoms, and every blossom produces a cucumber. More cucumbers than you know what to do with. A little look down my row of tomatoes, all coal tomatoes, and they're ripening nicely. I have ripe tomatoes every day, still a lot of green ones and still some blossoms. I keep tweaking the blossoms every day, try to keep them as many as possible pollinated. They're delicious, they're not huge. I'm going to do a bit of a harvest here in a, in a few minutes and I'll show you what I, what I pick of, of various things. but. Uh, very pleased with them. One plant here at the very beginning, which I guess you can probably see has green tomatoes on it. Hopefully I'm showing you the right plant. This grew from seed. It's a volunteer from a tomato that got thrown on the ground in here last year. And I'm not certain what the variety is. The ones that we're looking at there are sort of coal shaped, like the coal tomatoes. But there's another couple on the other side that sort of I don't know, have a different shape to them anyway. Whatever it is, I'm going to save some of the seed for, for next year because, uh, I mean, there's nothing ripe on it yet, but that came from a seed in here. It wasn't started under the lights in the house or anything and has grown, no, no, not even as tall as the rest of the coal plants. And it's got a lot of green tomatoes on it and still got blossoms. I think what we're looking at is my Bishop's Crown chili plant. It has lots of blossom buds on it. They never seem to get a chance to open. <laughs> I'm not sure what's eating them. I do have uh, grasshoppers in here. Whether they have a flower bud that grasshoppers like or, or not. But right now there are more buds on it, but there's still nothing open to, you know, pollinate for it or whatever. So hopefully I would like to see it develop a few so I can see what they're like. And that is the Japanese eggplant. It's got a flower bud that hasn't opened on top yet. It's had one other. I did everything I could do to see if I could get it pollinated. I kept tapping on it every day. Uh, it hasn't shriveled up and fallen off, and there does seem to be a little white thing inside where the blossom was. So hopefully I'll get to try my Japanese eggplant sometime before the frost arrives. Those are my Spanish uh, chilies. I got them from Canada Green Garden Center. Chili de Arbol, A-R-B-O-L. 
I either read something online or I thought they would be about the size of the Thai chili, not supposed to be that hot, but they're much larger. It's got a lot of green chilies on it and they're already three inches, maybe close to four inches long, so anxious to see what they're like once they ripen. Well, I've just done a bit of a harvest. I'll have some salad for lunch with my butter crunch lettuce and cucumbers and tomatoes. And for dinner this evening, I've pulled my first carrots. I pulled one other, I guess, and ate it raw in the garden, but that's the first time I've pulled any of the carrots. And they're a respectable size. I, I don't have enough that there'll be anything for winter storage anyway. I'll be eating them all fresh this summer and fall. This one's kind of interesting. It's a twin. Two carrots joined together. The tomatoes, the uh, cold tomatoes, great variety in their size. I can see whether you're seeing what I'm hoping you're seeing. This is about the largest that I ever see. And then a lot of them are, are this size. They're delicious no matter what size. I'm saving seed, my own seed, because they are an open pollinated heirloom variety. And the seeds that I'm saving are always from these larger tomatoes. So whenever I cut one of these, I cut a slice off the end and squeeze out a lot of the seeds and have them in a container. You sort of ferment them for a few days less than a week and then you can uh, dump everything into a strainer and rinse it well and most of the jelly like stuff vanishes and I tap them out onto a paper towel and, and dry them so they are as I say a delicious tomato and I like them because they're so early we have such a short season here I've been eating tomatoes now since the middle of July so that is good and it's the first time that I have picked any of the beans the yellow wax beans, there are more of those that are ready than the green beans. The green beans are a variety with Lewis, that's an open pollinated heirloom variety, and the yellow wax are just a, a commercially available seed from a seed company. But uh, there are a lot more of the green ones coming on, but the yellow ones produced earlier, and this is the first time that I've had some beans out of the garden, so those will go well with dinner this evening. And of course, as you can see, I've picked one of the uh, butter crunch lettuce. They're quite limp uh, in the heat of the day. And the trick that I do is you put them in a large bowl. I just remove the, all of the leaves. Don't necessarily cut them up or anything, but I put them in a large bowl with ice and water for a few hours until the ice cubes have, have melted. And that makes them crisp and, and crunchy and ready to eat. Well, thank you very much for watching. This isn't as long as some of my videos are, but I think that's about everything I want to show you from the garden. I'll get this uploaded.